we're gonna try and make this crazy sci-fi psychedelia. Okay, get right into it. 1920 by 1080. Gonna make that blob. If anyone can think of a faster way to do this, then please let me know. Um, right now, the pink is not actually relevant. It's just so I can see it easily. I'm making a shape with the pen tool because you can edit it and the lines are clean. Vectors in Photoshop are kind of often neglected, but they're the way to go. So I've just made that blobby shape. I want to get these edges feeling connected. Okay, both of those selected, Control E, join those shapes, merge shape components, there we go. Now for that stripy background in our source image, I want to make a pattern. So I'm going to make a new layer. Now Photoshop has just introduced a new pattern building thing. I'm not going to be using that in this one. Pattern preview. I'm not going to be using that. Okay, I'll use that. Let's give it a go. So this live preview is your pattern and shows me that if I don't get that pattern to the edge, then I'm going to have a line with dashes. Unfortunately, the crop tool disables it and you have to then go to view pattern preview again. So that's fine. Define pattern. Stripe. Back to here and we can apply that to the background. Stripe. So I think it's applied it at a funny style, otherwise it would be clean. 50, let's try for 100, let's try for 100, let's just see. Okay, it's nice to have it clean. Let's just do it jumbo style. Okay, so with that background selected, I'm gonna actually make a shape that extends beyond the bounds. And I'm going to apply, in that case, I just alt dragged on the pattern style. I'm going to make that a smart object. It's going to take a little while because of the size. It's, it's not liking it. It's not enjoying it. I could potentially apply the layer style after it's done its funky transform. So we're just going to warp it as it is pink to avoid the amount of uh, CPU time it takes to calculate all the stripes and then we'll apply the stripes after we've warped it. Okay so I'm going to just right click and hit warp. I'll bend the warp handles. So we've got enough artistic warpage that you're happy with. Hit, hit enter, go back into that, turn that pattern overlay back on, hit save, hit control W to close that window. It's having to really chug about saving that now. Okay, it saved it, thankfully. So you can only see a, a slight distortion there. It's not actually that pronounced. I'd like to get it more. So I'm going to just move that up a bit more. Why 
when it's looking sufficiently 90s rave flyer and bring that shape back in. Okay, we're going to get some sort of pseudo depth on this shape with the bevel emboss. And the inner shadows. So as I said, it is pseudo, pseudo depth, but this is just a piece of art, so don't get too hung up on a physical correctness. I'm going to drop a little bit of shade behind it. Now with all of this, I actually want to create something called a displacement mask with this. And I don't need that and I just need it in black and white. So I'm just going to go black and white, make that black and white, try and get some interesting contrast. But I want as many different shades of grey, excuse the pun, as possible to give us the maximal amount of displacement. So when I'm happy with that displacing this, I'm going to make that a smart object. That is now my displacement mask. Although I really should have brought the background. So I'm going to go back in and that will restrict me to the size. If it's not, if like with me, it's coming out of the sides, we need these to match up with the other, the original image. So I'm going to crop it using the background image crop. I'm going to save that to my desktop. For now it's basically a temporary file. Make sure it's a PSD. I'm going to call it black and white displace. Hit save. Replace that older version. Okay, so back here to this file with the pink layer, the, the 90s rave flyer background. I'm going to get a version of the stripes. I'm just going to control A, which selects the whole canvas. I'm going to copy and paste. That means I've got a, vec uh, a raster version of what was there. I'm going to apply the filter. And it's called distort displace to that. I'm going to leave these scales as they are. I'm going to repeat the edge pixels. You can experiment with these. I'm going to load up that PSD we just made and it's applied this distortion to where the shape is. Now I'm going to control click on that shape and I get the marching ants selection showing me that that shape is selected. Click on that one, hit layer style and that masks that one out. So now if I put that shadow back behind, you can see that we've got a separate layer there and we can play with the shadow, squash it down and whatnot. Give us a bit more depth. To an extent we can sort of start brushing that in. Now, I don't like how this rises up at the end, so I'm gonna bring that down. I'm going to control click that delete layer mask and then just make a new layer mask there okay now you want to get some of the colors of this into the original drawing now you can just play with the layer styles there soft light it's quite nice And we can delete some of that shape from the middle. 
using the brush, you can just brush some of that out and actually brush some of the background pattern out as well. So we're just left with a plain texture. <laughs> I still had that layer style on. And now to just make it ridiculously psychedelic to the point where nobody can take it seriously, we're just going to drop a gradient map over the top, duplicate that, control G, swap that around for a different gradient, and just get creative with the brush strokes on there. on the layer masks of the now create a vignette which is control A fill invert if it happens to be black using the eraser tool just a raise and you end up with this nice vignette so I'm just going to create a little bit more shadow behind ah, still on a razor it didn't actually work as shadow it worked better as white Super 80s weirdness. Anyway, hope it was useful. <laughs> Enjoy.